morning, everyone. We are glad you're here to worship with us today here at Advent Lutheran. We say Happy New Year. Um, this is the beginning of year C for us. And what that means essentially is that we're going to be encountering the Gospel of Luke uh, more often over the next year. Uh, and we're going to see the good news through the lens of the Gospel of Luke. And as always, we'll get a smattering of other Gospel texts in there. But this is the main focus for us this year. Uh, today is exciting because we have uh, some, uh, a couple of special things happening today. One is uh, we will be having the baptism of Logan Saylor. Chuck and Melanie's son here, and um, back by popular demand is Pastor David Hood. Um, Pastor David Hood uh, is here to help uh, with the actual <laughs> baptism, and so we're excited uh, that he could be here to baptize his grandson, and so he and I will be uh, playing tag team up here during the baptismal service. Um, when it comes to that, we'll be inviting any children who want to sit down here to kind of have a closer view to do so. Uh, but that's coming up uh, right after these announcements here, so, uh, so just hold on to your hats because that's coming soon. Um, we want to give a big thank you to everybody who came out to help assist with our caregivers afternoon out yesterday. It was an opportunity for us to, uh, to take special care of those, uh, some, some children with disabilities so that the parents and caregivers could have a, a time of respite. Um, Lori Ward is our deacon intern. Where'd you go, Lori? There you are. It was a joyful day, and I know that the parents uh, gave word that they deeply appreciated what we were able to do and provide for that afternoon. I know one family, one couple was like, we just went and saw a movie, and we just relaxed. And that's part of what we wanted to provide, was just a time away for caregivers. Um, so next Sunday, I need you guys, uh, if you're going to be active in this congregation these next couple of weeks, please, please, please pay attention to the calendar. See what fun stuff we have going on. Like next week at 945, we have what? One service? No. Try again. <laughs> we'll get this eventually. Next Sunday is coming, whether we like it or not. But it is a congregational meeting. So regular worship schedule next week, okay? Congregational meeting at 945. Um, for a quorum, we need 47 people, so please come. We would love your input. We're going to talk about our ministry spending plan. It gives us a guidance for our next year's spending. Um, and we would love your input. Okay, so next Sunday, 945. So just come next week to worship and stick around for another 45 minutes. We'd love that. Um, so please be here for the congregation meeting next week. Um, other than that, take a look at your announcement sheets and, and, and see what all is going on, what good things we're, we're, we're involved with. And uh, this Wednesday will be the beginning of our Wednesday services. We'll have noon services, but then we'll also have dinner church at 6 o'clock. Um, so if you would like to contribute by providing a soup or some rolls or some drinks, please sign up. Uh, sign, sign up Genius went out in the email. Uh, and so if you want more information on that, just contact the office and we'll get you connected with the right sign.
All right. Thank you very much for the play practice, the uh, the angel tree, and the bell ringing. And then, Catherine, do you have announcements? Uh, those who don't know, I'm Catherine Burnett, and I'm usually at 7, you know, 1045. Of course, Maxwell and I know of the work of the Christian for every month. So, if you'd like your help, uh, we want to get a good start in January with the updated listings. If there's something you want to do, please put down the sheet. Or if there's something you have been participating and you no longer wish to do that at all, please let us know so we can have that. Yeah, so. Yeah, these forms here. So those of you who are active here, we would uh, wish for you to fill this out so they can uh, do some uh, some coordination, some administrative work to help make sure we have folks we need together. We want everybody to, you know, be assigned a role, but if you don't want to do that anymore, we don't want to do that. Also, bring in our a decision. I don't know if it's going to work well, but for the last few months, Yeah, so if you want to help out the last two Sundays of the year and Christmas Eve, there's a sign-up sheet right there to help us with our worship. Thank you very much. Well, let's, we're going to continue our worship now uh, with our baptism for Logan. So far, he seems pretty chill. So that's cool. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and continue that if you guys want to... Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do uh, lighting of our Advent wreath real quick. My bad. Um, so this year, we are going to just have a, a brief word of prayer uh, with our baptismal, I'm sorry, with our lighting of our Advent candles. So Dylan, you come up here again. Okay. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. The night is past, and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle of this week. Rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes, and welcome him into our hearts and homes. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God's word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The lighting of our wreath marches us towards the day of Christmas. All right, uh, Logan and family, would you come on up? Those who wish to participate in this uh, opportunity, come on up here. Yes, there. Pastor David here, as I mentioned, is going to also help us as well. I'm excited about that. In the meantime, I would like for you to grab that hymnal in front of you and turn to page 227. That's in the smaller number at the bottom, page 227. If there's any little ones that want a closer look, you guys can come down here on the floor. Sorry, folks, don't trip over uh, the Lord. There we go. I just want you guys to have a, a close view of what's happening here. Um, excellent. So we've got family and sponsors uh, up here. And so uh, just the, the quick rundown. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rachel. Family members up here. So excited for the family. And then, of course, little Logan here and mom and dad. Happy for you. All right, yeah, all right, so we're going to go because he's, he's happy right now. <laughs> well, uh, if you would please follow along on page 227 in your hymnal. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. 
And now sponsors, if you would, uh, please share this top line here saying I present Logan for baptism. Well, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, as parents and sponsors, do you wish to have as parents, do you wish to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, answer, I do. I do. Now, as you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the Lord to the Word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. To place in his hands the Holy Scriptures. Nurture him in faith and prayer, so that your child may learn to trust God. Proclaim Christ through word and deed. Care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in Christian faith and life? Amen. Sponsors, and I'll add in family members, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? And to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. If so, answer, I do. I do. People of God, you sitting in the pews, this is your chance to give your promise. Do you promise to support Logan and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Now, uh, as family and sponsors and all present here, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. And now, addressing you as parents, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God. I renounce them. Now, congregation, you are invited to share in these words of faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you brought your Holy Spirit power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right. Here we go. Your spirit, he doesn't like water. Oh. <laughs> that might be about to change here. <laughs> Logan James, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now to, yeah, he's doing good. So on the bottom of page 230, we have a, uh, a, a refrain here that we will share together. And we'll say, blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your Son's new birth, cleanse him from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Logan James with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, 
both now and forever. Amen. Logan James, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. <laughs> well, let us now welcome the newly baptized. There are words on the bottom of page 231 that we can share in together. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you to the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Well, here's Logan Saylor, the newest member of the body of Christ. <laughs> and a proud grandpa. Yes. <laughs> what will the name be for grandpa? Papa D. Papa D. <laughs> Mama Jojo. And yeah, Mama Jojo. Where'd you go? Yeah. Well, we're very happy for you. Uh, Yes, yes, there's, there's, there's lots of nicknames going on up here, I'm sure. <laughs> but we're very happy for you all, and um, we'll continue our service by sharing the peace. I invite you to rise. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. <laughs> Oh, come to Zion. 
as we wait the coming of Christ, we pray and hope for the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord, we pray especially for Donna Murray, Charlie Carr, the family and friends of Jennifer Dickey's mother, and all those on our prayer list, and those we name aloud, or in the silence of our hearts. Lord God, united as one body in Christ, we pray for Antioch United Methodist Church and Pastor Linda Hiller. We also pray for the churches of the countries of the Lutheran World Federation, especially the churches in Angola and Zimbabwe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we pray for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, our Senate Bishop, Julia Gordon. We pray for our pastor, Michael Jeanette, the staff and ministry leaders of this congregation, Seminarian Elizabeth Hawkins, and intern, Lord World, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we pray for all those serving in the military, guarding our freedom, especially Cody, Drew, Kevin, Logan, Mike, Sean, Erica, Weston, Lorianne, and Stephen. Lord, in your mercy. Show your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and redeem us for your life and justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and and forever. Amen. You may be seated now as we continue our worship with our readings. Our first reading today comes from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days... From Luke. There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth distress among nations. Confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Good. Okay. Can anybody tell me what this thing is here? Uh, 
I say calendar, and it's got all kinds of cool pictures. And sometimes the pictures match up the season of the year. Like, can, can you tell me what's going on in this picture? It kind of looks like a snowman, but take a closer look and see what's going on. Can you tell? It's a graduation ceremony. And there's all this like little uh, piece of paper flying around. It, it, looks like, it makes it look like snow. And that's, what month is that? Can you tell me what month that is? What month is it? June, right? So it said June, right? So why would they have a picture of people graduating in June? Maybe because sometime around June, people graduate. Sometimes May, sometimes June. Because it's kind of cool to look at a calendar and see this picture, and it tells me what's going on. <laughs> what are you just going to show me for December? What does that look like? A church. A church? And what's on top of the roof? Well, there's a cross. I mean, you got to get it. I was thinking something else. There's a cross. What's that white, fluffy stuff sitting on top of the building? Oh, the snow. I know we don't, we're not very well acquainted with snow in these parts. But that would be snow on top of the building. So when certain things come around, like snow, what time of year do you think it is? Winter, Christmas, all these things, right? Sometimes it's even later. Sometimes it's January and February you get snow. But it's not often you get snow. But Jesus talks about the time, and he's not really sure. He says the Son of Man, he says he's going to come back again. But he has trouble figuring out which day it's going to happen. If you had to pick a day, what, what day would you want Jesus to come back? What do you think? What about you? What day? You have a day in mind? Christmas. Okay, Christmas. That'd be kind of ironic, right? He comes into the world on Christmas Day. And maybe it's all over on Christmas Day. We don't know. But Jesus doesn't know when on the calendar is going to happen. But he tells us there's, we're going to know. And you might ask, well, how are we going to know? And he's like, trust me, you'll know. Because it's going to be big. So we don't know when Jesus is coming. So what does that mean we do now? Should we be afraid? Should we be happy? Should we... I think we can be happy, right? What happened right up here this morning? A baptism. What do you think Logan's going to have the rest of his life? There's other people baptized there too. And we're going to help them too. And they're going to help us. Maybe if you tilt it at the right angle <laughs> to the light, you might be able to see the, the glistening oil on his forehead. But not really, right? We don't want to do that thing. We might get sick. But that oil reminds us that God is going to be with him through the Holy Spirit his whole life long. And he'll be supported. Not just by the Holy Spirit, but by all of us here. For we are the body of Christ. So for that we celebrate. We don't know on the calendar when Jesus is coming, but we know he'll come. We'll know. But we don't have to be afraid. We'll celebrate. Because God is with us. Now and always. Let's pray. Dear God, help us not to be afraid. Help us to be joyful that you have marked us with your seal, with the Holy Spirit coming to us. Help us to know we are supported all of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And here's a kind of calendar for you guys. So this is uh, called an Advent calendar. So every day from now until Christmas, you get to open up one. Of it. It's not as fun, <laughs> but it's got prayers and uh, verses of songs that you can look at and read with your family. And uh, yeah, mine's not made out of Legos either. It doesn't have samples of wine in it, sorry. <laughs> kind of pass <clears throat> it. So, some of you may know that I am uh, the father of a Oakland football player. <laughs> So, 
So that I'm excited about and proud of. Um, but here was my dilemma Thursday night: is the Cowboy Saints game was on, <laughs> and I am in Cookville. So what to do, right? Now back in the day, you might set what's called a VCR, but then a game is three hours and it takes two hours, and you got to do it with the slow play. And it's it's tricky. But nowadays you have DVR, right? So DVR the game, and. Um, I wasn't going to hold out. I was going to, I kept up the score on my phone as I'm watching Oakland stop Whitehaven. I'm looking at my phone to see what the Cowboys are doing, and they did one. But um, the next day, I went to watch the game. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to, I mean, like, imagine, like, you got to go out and get the, the food together to, to, to prepare your part of the Christmas snacks at the party coming up that night, but the game's on, and you want to, you can't do both, right? So then you DVR the game, and you go out, and you don't want to know the score. You want to watch the game. And how hard is it, right? You can't look at your phone. You can't talk to people. You can't look at social media if you don't want to know the score of the game because it's going to be out of everything. But anyway, that's hard. But I decided that night, Thursday night, I'm just going to go, and I'm going to keep up with the score, but then I'm going to watch the game later on. And so, sure enough, Friday comes around, Bill and I are hanging out, and we're watching the Cowboys game. Now, I knew the outcome of the game. I knew the score. So do you think that affected the way I watched the game? No. Yeah. Sure, right? If there's a missed the heart. Well, <laughs> I could fast forward through commercials for sure, but what did you say? You fast forward through the huddles. But yeah, fast forward through the huddles. But... You know, if there's a missed call, if there's a, a penalty against my team, or if there's something that goes bad, it's not as bad because I know the outcome of the game. It changes things for you when you know the result, when you know what the end will be like. This is what Advent's about. The season of Advent. We know the outcome. We know the score. We know it was costly. But we know who reigns. And so our first gospel text begins with the end in mind. Now, for so long, fear has been something that the church has used to prey upon others in order to make them believe. And of that, the church should repent. Because we know, we know the outcome. We know the end. I want to read a short paragraph from a pastor named David Lowe. He does a lot of preaching, uh, sort of preparation work. And I thought he really captured this idea about fear and how fear runs rampant in our society. So this next couple of sentences are from Pastor David Lowe. He says, the greatest challenge we face today is not war or economic inequity, or community unrest, or prejudice, or division, but fear. And why? This is continuing Pastor Lewis's words. Because fear is at the root of all these things I just mentioned. Think about it. From Pharaoh in the first chapter of Exodus to today's despots, fear is the means by which we turn those who are in some fashion different from us into an enemy, a people against whom we should war. Fear causes us to hoard, assuming we will never have enough, and seeing those around us as competitors for scarce resources. Fear drives a wedge of distrust into our communities that fracture solidarity and compassion. Fear causes us to define ourselves and those around us, not by what we share, but by what makes us different. Fear creates an either-or and an us-them mentality that makes it nearly impossible. Pastor Lowe's closes, fear in short. Our vision and stunts our imagination. Over, this is back to Pastor Michael, over, and over again, the command we see from the beginning of Scripture to the end, the most prominent one, has to do with fear, right? What's the, what's the command? Do not fear. 
And then what usually follows that? For I am with you always. Do not fear, for I am with you. Yet we continue to zero in on fear as the major factor for our faith, and I don't think that that's helpful. Now, there's scary signs in this gospel text. Jesus talks about the sun, the moon, the stars, everything going wacky, just everything just going out of, just everything going sideways. And, and I, I wonder why, why this, right? Why, why these major, major signs? And, and there will be fear and foreboding, it says, whatever foreboding is. But it says that there will be this terrifying set of events that come to be. And I pause and think, you know, maybe not everybody knew about Jesus. Maybe not everybody knew about the Son of Man coming, right? There may be some people who never heard of Jesus. And so maybe, just maybe, they create a sign that nobody's going to miss. Like I was telling the kids up here, when's the end? You'll know, right? What am I going to see? He's like, trust me, you'll know. You're going to know. It's going to be just out of this world. And it might be scary, but then what does Jesus call upon the disciples to do in the midst of that hectic, crazy scene? What does he say about their heads? So lift up your heads, for your redemption is drawing near. Now I think a lot of times the church has said, you better be ready, right? Before this day. You know, there's a song about it, right? You better not cry. You better not pout. You better not pout. I'm telling you what. You better be good, right? For goodness sake. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Right? This whole, you better be good for goodness sake. That's not Jesus. <laughs> right? We love to sing this song. That's not the tactic for Jesus. Yes, there will be this great, terrible, otherworldly set of circumstances, but lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing near. Folks, that is good news. Why? Because we know how this whole thing ends. Jesus on the cross, overcoming the cross, the power of death defeated once and for all. <coughs> There's good news in this gospel text. Your redemption is drawing near. The kingdom of God is near. My words will not pass away. Those words in our text today tend to get buried under these awful sights of the earth and the moon and everything going crazy. But Jesus promises. How do I say this? Jesus doesn't promise to take away our fear. Right? All of you have circumstances in your life where you've been afraid. I know for myself when my kids have been in the hospital or when we've had uh, money running low or, or we've had you know, death in the family, we, we become afraid. face those fears. That when you can't deal with it on your own, that there is this body that surrounds you. Having given what we need to have courage in the face they have been baptized, or they may be, if they haven't yet. Here in the waters, it's more than just water. It's God's promise to be with you your whole life long. And because of this, you know the end. You know where this whole thing, how this whole thing turns out. And so in the midst of the fear, have courage. Lean on to that anointing of oil. For you are now a light in this world. A light that no darkness can overcome. You are now extending the light of Christ as a follower. We know the score, folks. Jesus wins the victory. We are part of that team. 
Jesus then calls us to be ready to act and to serve and to love, to welcome others in. And perhaps yesterday here with our caregivers afternoon out, we caught a glimpse of the kingdom of God where we could come together, people of different abilities, and have fun and do crafts and blow bubbles and sing songs about snowflakes. Just for a little bit. And to give some rest in the midst of the worries of those parents. We do not fear the end, folks. We welcome the end. With open arms, lifting our heads high, with a courage that is contagious. Amen. I invite you to rise as we sing our song of the day.
The disciples were not sure what to make of Jesus' message of the cross. They sat there afraid, worried. And Jesus then gave them examples how to live the rest of their days as he wrapped a robe around himself and knelt, knelt down at their feet and washed their feet. And afterwards, he gave them a meal which would change things forever. This would be the courage they would need in the face of their fears. And that night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as his faithful disciples we pray together as our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power,
peace and love and serve the Lord.